Hi guys, good, well good morning. I thought I'd do this early on the Sunday because of course it's the North London derby today. Um, so I just want to ask everyone that if Arsenal do win, we all let Piers Curran know about it. Uh, and if Arsenal lose, we don't let me know about it. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd get it out the way early doors while I'm in a good mood. Because uh, of course there's no guarantees that uh, later on I will be. Um, but yeah, pretty good week uh, or end of the week for, for risk assets. Uh, the You can see on my left hand side here, I've got the DAX is how we finished on Friday up at the highs. The S&P the same and, and, and T-Nuts coming off a bit, which is quite a surprise. Um, uh, into the close of a week, people are happy to hold risk. So how we finish there makes me pretty confident that we're going to have a, a a good week going forward um, and I had a check earlier on the the weekend markets and I'll do it again now just to have a quick look you know IG very good just for having a look to see you know what is being priced in for the open uh, on Wall Street okay it's down 0.05 percent so flat um, which is similar to uh, to last week which was the first time we hadn't gap lower in three weeks uh, well we had done three weeks prior so I expected a good week and we got one not a massive one but we, we got one um, and I, I I do think we've already seen the lows of the month you know that's not a massively bold statement but uh, the idea is that I still think there's some upside to, to come let's have a quick look over uh, the charts as normal though um, you can see euro last week I, I finished by having this this potential trend line on just as a bit of a guide that we were getting squeezed and and you can see when when you start I, I guess really trying to put things on that aren't there it can get a bit messy yes we, we had a bit of a push higher but really this market is is still you know stuck within these little ranges really strong level of resistance um, which we, we've had marked up for so long before that uh, you can see the market is just paying so much attention to it here you know it's a really good level um, that I would continue to have on also to the downside our kind of line in the sand area of support held well not only Friday but also on the 7th uh, and the 8th which would be Tuesday and Wednesday so good good, uh, good area there I guess looking at that then you know 112 80 below there then we are looking back I mean I you know looking at that level uh, you've got to be you know pretty confident uh, that that could be the low for now the, the reactions we've had from there have been been pretty good uh, so the buyers in control for now. We are getting ultimately. We are getting. We are getting squeezed a lot. Uh, you've also got that weekly trend line that keeps coming through here. You know, let's just bring that in actually um, for you guys to to have a look at and put that on the weekly. And um, you know, you can see just sort of almost as it comes down through these levels here as well. Uh, price just getting squeezed in. Um, decision time I think is due soon. I'd be surprised if we got if we, we ended up coming lower, but that, that as someone who is sort of bullish risk, short term bearish dollar pairs, you know, that's below below this area still where I wouldn't want to be in it, is the way I would look at this. So yeah, for now, positive, uh, the Euro, how we finished on Friday is, is nice for those bulls. You've got I guess here you've, you've got two, three ways to, to look at this. You can be patient and wait for the long if we are to get above this key resistance, this trend line. You've got happy to stay long as long as we're above this area. You can stay short below there down towards this key level. But if you're ultimately bearish and you, you're happy to be late to the party, you know, below this key level is how I would look to play it. But as I've said on previous videos, that doesn't mean, you know, below here we're all the way back down to the trend line. We have got obviously some very key support points to come through. But for now, while we haven't necessarily moved either direction for a few weeks, I would say the Euro bulls are in control. And, and uh, you know, look, this, and I will go on to, pound, to the pound to talk in a moment, which has been a lot cleaner market. This is the advantage of trading multi-assets. Uh, is and set with the same edge if it works is that there are better opportunities out there if you're a you know looking for momentum or you're looking for a, a decent trend you can't really have got that in the euro with and you know being a in a position where you're happy i mean if you get in the, that that friday monday 
obviously it's nice now, but one, two, three, four days it comes down, and this is over a week later back to your entry. So you've got to, you know, you've got to feel comfortable holding that position. Likewise with these these um, resistance levels here, they work, but we keep coming back. So maybe no real big move for the bulls or the bears yet, and those probably I would say come above that trend line or below our area of support shaded in red. Over to the pound. Um, well, look at that. The bulls have got to be happy. You know, if you're you're bullish, the pound here. You, I would say you, you probably on Thursday de-risked a bit as we came towards the 200-day moving average. There, that that's an obvious target, and we've slowed up there a couple of times. So the way I'm looking at this, if I was bearish, I've I've sort of got a bit confident that maybe we start to turn over and we look to drift down because of that rejection. However, you know we're still above a key level of what was resistance seven days ago. So we're above there, look at that. We haven't quite come back to retest it as such. So 125.46 for sure is still gonna be an area now of support where the bulls need to defend and the bears need us to get lower. So that's a key, key decision point there. 200 day moving average is exactly the same. You know, there's, I mean, just look how much nicer a market this is than the Euro. You've got levels so well respected. You've got good opportunities that come down here. I mean, look at that. Decent push, get above all these super lines in the sand that we've got marked up here. Strong resistance at each of those points. I mean, wow, what a dream. And I think quite a lot of the, the pound related pairs have been a pretty good market as well. Uh, but yeah, 200 day moving average capping price to the upside, a break above there. You know, we, we've had these levels to the upside marked up for quite a long time. They need to stay. Uh, and to be honest, I, you know, I wouldn't really move too much around here. I think it's, you know, this is what you'd like to see, you know, seven days later that your levels are, are work, they're still intact. And uh, yeah, I'll go for that. I think the pound still looks like a pretty good market. If you're short, if you're bearish, uh, below 125.46 makes sense or the whole false break of say the 200 day moving average is obviously a good uh, little opportunity and actually last week there were some really nice uh, false breaks you know one of, you know, one of the, the best signals for me to either go long or short is the false break of a level and it's just you know in this scenario here where the pound on, on uh, Friday look to have broken this area you know we, we then close above whether it be in the 16 15 five minute whatever and that's just me you know the market telling us that the bears gave up they, they had nothing left to push us lower the bulls are back in control and we push to the upside same again you know we we break below a key resistance level we don't close and then we push on same in the euro a couple of times last week as well and you know, we, we broke, say, a key level, we close above, uh, and, and we push on. It's, it, it really is just such a fantastic uh, way. And look, previous low, you know, here, you can see that whole false break. If you're only looking for a short, yes, we do close above, but really, you know, this has to be a zone. So we don't close above that zone, and we, and we drift down. So, yeah, going back to that, that pound, the 200-day moving average, false break could be another opportunity to get short. But for now, I don't feel comfortable i wouldn't feel comfortable being short unless you know i did fade uh fade in a trade up to that 200 day i'd rather be short below here or in the false break this area the 125.46 for me is still in a point where the bulls would be in control but the pound again looks a lot cleaner than the euro aussie we had the trend line on we got that break and, and look, look the circles up at the top again none of these have been modified or looked at on the the daily chart um since sunday but you can see those circles really capping price to the upside aren't they you know really strong level i guess we can now remove one of those points i probably will just actually remove those circles just so it's a bit cleaner for us uh next week but you can see the point of having those on right just really strong area of resistance up there that needs to stay above uh, the 70 handle we're looking at the high of the year i would still have you know this point on there as a bit of a guide the only thing we probably need to realize is if we do move lower keep an eye on the trend line uh, and of course if that does break 
then we could be looking at, uh, well, yeah, the lows of the 30th of June uh, and the 15th to come in. And as I've said each time, to keep an eye on that 200-day moving average, for me, looks a pretty good opportunity to get long lower down. Of course, with any, um, with any, uh, I'll leave that trend on, with any market that does come down, of course, you've got to uh, reassess the market conditions. Was there a reason we dropped lower and could go down? But certainly 200-day moving average looks good for the Aussie. Also, if we were at any point to come back down to so that 110 handle in Euro, looks very good as well. The pound, uh, I must say, if it does come lower, um, I think uh, there's this mm, doesn't look to be an amazing area support that hasn't, you know, I, li I really like areas that haven't been tested for a while, whereas the pound has, has and to its advantage, has been a lot better for intraday, medium term trading. Uh, S&P. Do I need to change any levels? Probably the resistance. I can just touch up a bit to the high of last week, which is where we finished on. Uh, and then we've obviously got a nice area of support, cap in that. Uh, it's a good, 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 good little zone to have here between 83 and 07 to the upside. Obviously, we've got those highs. Then we're looking at 32, 31 if we can get above there. Obviously, on the futures from the rollover, the 19th of June is worth considering key lows other than that would i have much on let's have a look and see if we can have a trend line from the all-time high Ooh, look at that that is lovely well you know there's two ways to look at it if you're bearish and, and i understand it's been a hard time to be bearish um you've hit a trend you got the high of the week how we start next week could be a key to get short um Again, if I was not currently long, you know, I might consider unwinding a bit of that position if we come under 83, certainly under 76. Uh, and you know, this is obviously where I'm long from. You know, this is where my stop would be. So below there, I, I have no interest in it. But yeah, these are all points where, you know, I would not really feel too comfortable uh, about being in those longs. But trend line being hit. The flip side of that is, can I add to a position? Can you add to a position? Can you get in a new one if we get above that trend line? If we get above maybe 3,200, looking for price to really kick on to levels obviously not seen since uh, the, 8th, the 9th of June, but more importantly up here, 10th of Feb, uh, which I don't think is out of the question. Uh, but we've got earnings coming up. Uh, look out for Anthony's macro menu later. As always, is, is a great great way to set the, the week up um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sure it will will have the calendar in there from earnings whispers uh, and if not follow them on, on Twitter they're great but Netflix are, are, are certainly out next week and the week after as well is uh, is even better uh, in terms of of earnings coming out for for opportunities perhaps um, moving to the Nasdaq you know I've had this loose uh, trend channel one we're at the top of that now uh, the market doesn't want to come down right I mean look on the futures I mean this is insane we haven't had two down days in futures since since the 13th and 12th of May if you sell after every you know second down day I mean you're laughing or after every down day you're laughing here incredible incredible market um, begs the question, you know, how high can it go? I, I think the sky is still the limit. Where, I guess, and let's just remove everything except the trend channel. Is that trend channel still on? You know, where is the, the next point to really load up on a, on a long? You can see, you know, here, we got a good reaction. However, we, we spiked through to the upside and downside on that. I would be potentially looking at something like the longs from these two points for me. Can we get at some point down to there to load up in a market that has proven now is the time for tech uh, to, to go higher? Earnings could move things around, but if, if you're overall bullish, you know, earnings are, could just be a tiny dent to, to then get in lower down is the way I'm looking at it. 
Um, below both of those points, I guess, we're also then looking below this trend, and that could lead to a bigger move lower. I'm not looking to short this high up. Um, at the same time, I'm probably not looking to, to get long on, on the highs of, of the day. And sometimes you just got to accept if you're not in it, let it go. Um, whereas if you are in it and it's risk free, hold it. Hold this bad boy. You know, it could, can continue to, to go and go and go. Would it surprise people? Probably not. But look, it's going vertical. Surely a pullback is due. A pullback in the NASDAQ is going to impact the, the Dow and the S&P more so. Uh, as well so just bear that in mind but for me if we can get this zone probably in the next couple of weeks uh, I would like it but below that trend line I'll probably be saying you know maybe a long from from here is, is a bit better but as equities are showing we are finding possibly some resistance I say that lightly uh, Dow Jones it's, it's certainly you know, saw a nice tweet or a, a tweet over the weekend. You know, the the Nasdaq is the new new equity market, and, and the Dow, the old one. No one cares about it anymore. Um, and it's shown, but you know, if this goes back to all time highs, you know, you are looking at a very good trade from where we are now. You know, nice little 13, 14 percenter. You know, it's not to be laughed at, is it? Um, levels are intact, aren't they? I don't really need to change anything. Not much movement. Our lows uh, that we had on hit to the tick on Friday end up being great support. 200 day moving average, you can see on the 7th was hit. You know, it's, uh, yeah, nothing needs to be changed there at all. Boring, but also good. You know, above the 200 day moving average, we're looking for the high that we got on the 16th. Below our Friday low, then we are looking for this wonderful area of support that we talked about two weekends ago coming back into play. What were the longs there like? Eh? I mean, that was just just fantastic. Uh, let's have a quick look over the DAX as well, because you can see when we did this, it was coming to that similar area, uh, albeit it did spike down, but turned out to be another good opportunity to have got in. Uh, we're above this zone that I've had on, closed above, come back down, couldn't close below there. Good opportunity for the, the bulls to have got in. You'd, you'd say, looking at this, unless we've got a trend line from the all-time high it's not good enough uh, yeah unless we've got that we, we are then looking for this this higher to come in big big zone second time we probably get hit is it gonna hold because if not well what's stopping it getting to this this sort of breakdown point that we had on the, the you know the 21st but also that the the 10th the of Feb what other market has a key level on the 10th of, of Feb you got it the S&P, very correlated it seems at the moment, the DAX and the S&P, look at that. I mean, get which market's which, if you don't know the numbers on the right hand side. Very correlated, in my opinion, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> um, but yeah, above here, I'd expect a decent push to the upside, close of the day obviously. Uh, whereas if we close below 12,487, it wouldn't be too surprising to see a bit of a drift down, keeping an eye on the moving average uh, and then these lows down here. I'm just going to put these lines on, but uh, yeah, it's congested to say the least um, around this area here. Big area of support below there, then yeah, maybe we do start to push down a bit. So a quick look at the lows just to see if we've got anything worthwhile having on. Mm, no, not for me. Not for me. Let's have a look over at gold. The market that uh, yeah took 1800 and finished pretty much bang on it. I must say, you know, looking at, at, at gold, I'm, I'm not, you know, a, a massive fan of it right now. I know we're above the that range that we were in, and it was a range market. We then, you know, finally got to close above. It's been messy up there. I, I think, you know, this was obviously a nice opportunity. If you remember back on the, uh, the 26th, we came back down to test it again. So for me, this was the point to have get, got in, if not already in. Uh, and that's led to obviously a good push higher. But when you know we're at multi-year highs, you've got just such a battle with this market where if the equities go higher, you know, are we talking risk on like we saw on Friday, or is it a weaker dollar? We go higher. Yes, overall the conditions are probably still good for gold. I'm just not sure if buying up here is is the right right play. So I'll be I'll be focusing on on trying to get some potential 
pullback in this market. Um, maybe worth having this trend line on. I don't know. I don't know. It still looks a bit messy, really. But yeah, below here, I still wouldn't mind 17.54, to be honest. I think with, with gold, the way I, I would play this, though, with any of these support levels, is there's a way wait to see what happens at those levels you know there's no harm in in uh, waiting for the false break to occur like we saw on those intraday time frames in euro pound and obviously longer term as well um yeah that's how i'll be going about it and of course resistance levels you know you are looking at uh, the highs that we haven't seen for such a long time bringing that in this just remove everything on that um and and start talking about well look we, we, we've just taken out the the four November fourteenth high it could be a great level to to go short stop above now the new high of the year drifting us back down potentially do we get up to the all time high September eleventh on futures nineteen nineteen you know let me know in the chat actually guys what do you reckon do does gold go all that way we'll find out won't we. But uh, yeah, look look at that rejection there on the weekly um, of, the, of that level. One test to, to the tick, here comes back lower. Maybe we have to come back down to test 1776 for going higher on. Let's have a quick look at silver as well, which has uh, been more of a, a lag uh, than gold, um, but is still pushing higher. And you can see here on the weekly, you know this area I've had marked up for some time. We did close above there, but on the flip side, you can say maybe we, we false, uh, we attempted, we couldn't get quite above the the third of September high. So silver doesn't look as interesting to me, but as long as we stay above this area here, you know I'd be happy to be long trend line as a bit of a guide still in play area support. I mean it just looks messy to be honest. I think gold, while I don't necessarily want to get it right now, looks cleaner. Oil. Um, you know, I, I was speaking to, we got some interns in at the moment, and I was speaking to them about, about oil and how we have this trend line that everyone in the world is watching that trades oil from these lows. And I was saying, sometimes with these, you know, the best opportunity to get long is the false break, as I've said a million times already this uh, this uh, video, is the false break of, of a level lower. And look at that, we've had a bounce. I reckon we go now. I reckon we get above $41. We take out, you know, and close above the, the 6th of March low. Yeah, uh, you've got to be bullish this market, in my opinion. Um, obviously, a close blow, the trend line changes that for me, but I think we push on. I think we take these levels out, and resistance levels are still intact. I'll be honest, from the 30th to the 9th of July, I don't think there was really a good opportunity in, in oil. However, last three days it has been. Um, false break of a trend line, people were trapped short. I think we go now. I think we go now. I think the opportunity is there. Um, however, you know, break and close blow that trend line properly. You probably don't want to be in it. Uh, you don't don't want to be in it. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it there. Um, obviously, guys, please uh, do check out. Where is it? Down that way. Um, Amplify now, uh, and also Amplify Live. If you are interested in in joining the the, the traders chat room that we have. Uh, feel free to, to email me at s.northamplifiedtraining.com if you do want to know more about it. Uh, fingers crossed for the Arsenal. And finally, got a haircut, uh, which was long, long overdue. The barbers couldn't believe how uh, how much hair I had, how thick it was. But uh, we're here now. We move. Uh, and it seems like maybe the world is, is, is starting to turn a corner as well and, and things are slightly getting better uh in europe at least anyway uh anyway guys hope you have a great week ahead of you uh, any questions as usual please do let me know whether it be in the chat here or, or on twitter uh but yeah look forward to, to catching up with you uh, all shortly and if not see you all next week <laughs>